Welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about something that can make or break your windsurfing experience, the mast. A great windsurfing rig isn't just about the sail. Even the best sail will perform poorly if it's paired with the wrong mast, because the sail and mast are designed to work together as one unit. In this video, we'll dive into our SDM carbon masts, explain the philosophy behind our unique 20 centimeter length system, and show you how to choose the right mast for your setup. Welcome back guys to another video here on the Patrick YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about the mast. The mast, unlike basically all the other brands I think, don't have a 30 centimeter distance between each of them, but a 20 centimeter distance. What is the reason? Why are you doing this with a 20 centimeter steps? Yeah, so we have a uh, 380, 400, 420, 440 and so on and so on. And uh, our idea was to, to allow every rider to choose the best mast for its, let's say, weight, uh, style, technique, skills. For, for let's say, for our 6.2 or 6.4, we recommend the 420, but you can also use the 400 because it's only 20 centimeter di uh, difference if you're a lighter guy, or you can also put the 440 if you're a heavier rider. So you have basically already three masts you can put in the same cell. And that's a massive advantage. Like I think the, the connection that a lot of people have with this are, so I need to buy way more masts. Yeah, with 20 centimeter steps, obviously there's more masts than with other brands, but then this is not the case, no? Absolutely correct. But you have to understand like the, an SDM mast is, I mean, who is buying an SDM mast? You buy it if you have a camber cell. Already our three cam cell has an RDM mast and this is three, uh, 30 centimeters distance from one to another. But in a competition, if you have a camber cell, so what do you expect? You want to have the max out of performance. So I can use each mast and combine it with like each bottom with each top. Theoretically, even a 400 with a 500. Well, this is then the, another topic. Yes, we have, uh, we made sure that the connection is always, uh, was always the same diameter. So you can basically to put the 380 top on a 550 base or the other way around. So that's the next advantage. So as a rider, again, like, ah, the, it, I mean, you've seen yourself, you're, you're pretty good on a good level. If you have, um, if you feel like, oh, for downwind speed or for my top speed or just to beat my personal best or even in a competition, you feel like you wish I have a bit more flex top, I mean, a bit more loose leech. Let's say on, a, on the 6.2 or 6.3, you can use the 420 base, but you can put the 400 top and you get a different curve. Or the other way around, if you wish like, if you feel like the top is a bit flapping and you have more crosswind sailing and you wish to have a bit more upwind power, also maybe for the defi, you know, you have to pinch upwind for sometimes. And uh, you can do it the other way around. You can, let's say, okay, I'm using the 420 base with the 440 top. So you, you have really like, you have a lot of possibilities. If you go, you have the recommendation, let's say for a sale 400. Can you quickly explain if I take the 420, what is the different feeling? If I take the 380, what is the different feeling? Well, it's logic that the smaller size is always softer in e I IMCS. So um, again, if we speak about the 6.2 or 6.4, if you, the recommended mass is a 420, so if you put the 400, the whole cell will be softer and then absorb. Let's say if it's really, really choppy and the cell is, yeah, exactly like we had in the last few days here. Um, you wish you have some amortization and if the cell is really stiff and you hit the upcoming chop, all that weight from the cell is really pushing onto the board, which makes the board dive into the chop even harder. So if you have a cell which is a bit more spongy, it absorbs it. So you feel less pounding on the board. Or imagine you are in Grisson, very flat water, and um, you have that one cell and the wind drops a little bit and you're like, ah, competition starts like in, in 30 minutes and um, the wind is just not as strong as you wish. And you know that you need to pinch a bit more upwind. You can actually put the 440 in and you know, you just have this extra power. Smaller mast, softer, bigger mast, Harder, and of course, if you switch top and bottom, you just get um, depending how you switch it a harder base, a softer top, or a softer base and a harder top. Yeah, 
Yeah, so it pretty much just gives you more power to, to have more variations, have more things you can try. One thing that I see on the masts is we have a mark right here, so that we always align the mast exactly the same. What is the advantage of doing that in comparison to having it always in a different uh, angle or attachment? To easy um, explain the, about the performance, this is the ferrule where the mast is um, connected together. This ferrule will pretty much go the same length inside the base. So where the ferrule stops, you have a difference in uh, hardness. And when you connect the top, also here where the ferrule stop, here it's much stiffer and here it's softer. If the mass is in the cell, and let's say the mass is now bended to the back, all right? So right here, there and there, you will have a bit more bend to the back. So if I, looking from the top, turn the mast and another day for uh, 90 degrees to the side, I have the base here, which is still bent to the back, mm. but the top side will be then bent to the left. So you will have like, say, a different curve. So if I then 180 degrees turn it to the other side, I still have the base bending to the back, but the top is bending to the right. If you align it here and you put it inside always the same way, the bend is always in the same direction, and especially the durability it is much better. And I also heard something about the Patrick Mass. I think you put some, some reinforcements or something inside so that these places are a little bit more protected from, from tear and wear. Yeah. You can see the, the top is a bit more shiny, so that's all carbon. And then you can see that the, the base has that's shiny and then it gets a bit darker or let's say more matte. So from there all the way to here, this is a layer of glass just to protect it from the boom and um, the cambers. And you know, how they, I mean, there's sand everywhere here. I mean, you can see this beautiful scenery and it's just like, it looks like on the moon. So there's a lot of sand and um, you can literally not avoid to have some sand on the cambers or when you move your boom height, you open, you put it down, there's some sand goes between. And yeah, also when you go sometimes in the shore break, you change some yeah. setting, the sand just gets in. You will always have somewhere some sand. And then for the mast, you can clearly see See that when you have a pure carbon mass where the camber sits you actually almost have like a like a little recess after some time so mm. the the wall thickness get thinner so and sooner or later i mean it's obvious it will just that sounds scary <laughs> yeah it, it is scary but this is exactly what i want to avoid so with the glass you can see it, it's not as beautiful when you look at it because the glass obviously is more let's say a transparent or white color but at the end of the day what you want you want a, a mask which lasts longer or you you look at the optical aspect and for me definitely durability is very important for me all right i hope we could shine some light on uh, on the patrick mass and why we have this 20 centimeter steps yeah. and yeah i think there's a lot of attention to detail as always with the patrick yeah. brand now and yeah check out the mass on the website obviously we sell them through exclusive dealers and uh, yeah also subscribe to the youtube channel because we're going to do a lot more content here on the youtube from here on out let's go surfing no <laughs>